to such a freedom I have found you You're the healer Who makes all things new Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not going back Moving ahead Here to declare to you My past is over Surrendered my life to Christ. 
Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Those of you in the house here at Haven Hill Baptist Church, and those of you online, welcome to another divine service. This is Youth Sunday, and the theme that we're focusing on for today is get out of your comfort zone. So there are several interpretations to this, but we're going to start at the literal level. I don't want you to just spectate and just watch us. I want you to get involved and participate. You know, if you feel like shouting hallelujah, make sure that you type hallelujah in the chat. Participate with us as we get into praise and worship. Let's just begin with a word of prayer. Father God, we want to thank you for this lovely day that you have given to us. Thank you for the youth of this nation and thank you for the charge that you have given us to mold and to shape and to guide them we welcome your presence in this place at this time father god and we pray lord for a good service a good time in your house i pray lord jesus that people will be energized souls will be revived and those who don't know you as lord and savior will accept you as lord and savior and we're going to get right into the praise and worship with the song only you are holy of course we want you to join in and sing with us and those of you in the house here feel free to join in worship as well as we sing only you are holy here we go with everything that you have only you are worthy Wonderful. For there's no one else like you. Who is faithful, ever true. All my love, my heart, my life. So we're going to do that one more time. Only you are holy.
This next song says, here is my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship. And we're going to sing that unto God. We're not singing it to each other. We're not just focusing on the TV screens or the laptop screens. We're engaging in worship and we want to sing this one unto God. Here is my worship. Let's go. It starts like this. You, Lord, you are worthy and no one can worship you for me.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to be changing the pace at this time and we're going to ask you to join us. Stand as we sing these songs. These songs may be a little bit more familiar at this time. So we're going to start with the first one that I'm sure everybody can join with us in singing. This is called Sing Praises Unto God, Sing Praises. And then we'll run into a medley of other songs. All right? Sing Praises Unto God. Here we go.
may be seated for now. We'll ask you to stand in a few. We're going to take it down and we're going to sing this one. Let the king of my heart. It says, let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. He is my song.
And because he's good, we're going to finish the praise and worship segment with a hymn called "'Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus." Would you join us as we sing this hymn? Please stand as we sing this hymn, "'Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus," just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. be seated let's make that the prior of our heart let's try our best to trust in Jesus regardless of everything that is happening around us we need him more in these days and we have to try our best to trust him I'm going to be inviting to the stage at this time pastor Jason Anderson who is going to be doing the welcome and announcements good morning everyone good morning Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> really, really great to see everybody here this morning. Thank you so much for joining us, those who are here physically. Uh, we're in their school uniforms. It's Uniform Sunday and Youth Sunday. And it's also a celebration, the final day of the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So people are also wearing pink for those. If you're online, you're not able to see all of us in the auditorium. Uh, that's what's going on here. We are delighted to have you today. Uh, we're so thankful for the worship. Uh, that we are able to give God our praise and honor to get us started. Thank the young people for that. And we want to take this time out to recognize any in our service and online. You can post a message in the chat. You are with us for the very first time. You've never worshipped with Haven Hill Baptist Church on a Sunday morning. And you're here today, here physically. You can stand briefly. Or you're here online. Please post that so we can see it. We'd like to sing to you our welcome song. Okay, we have a visitor. Very, very nice to have you here. And I see a couple of names, Danica Davis and others here on the 
in chat. Glad to have you. There's a welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. Hallelujah. There's a welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. We truly mean that. Thank you so much for joining us here in our auditorium and also those online and trust that you have been blessed so far and will continue to enjoy the service and feel engaged to our Lord in a special way uh, today. Uh, we also want to welcome our guest speaker today. More will be said about him. Uh, he's no stranger to us, Reverend Ronald Webster. He's also here with his daughter Renee, who actually just graduated from law school. Uh, we congratulate her on that. All right, so it's very good to have him today, and we're looking forward to what God is, has laid on his heart to share with us uh, today. All right, and uh, also says it's uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, or in a little while, we'll also hear a uh, testimony from one of our very own members, our sister Tamika Reese. We're looking forward to seeing how God will use her to inspire and to encourage, as he has been her rock for so many years in this time. And just a couple of notices here for us uh, as well. The uh, service is being streamed live on YouTube. And you can connect with us there and also on Instagram, Haven Hill Baptist Church, uh, and Facebook as well. Uh, we really are happy, even though we are going through the challenges of COVID, uh, the Word of God has expanded and has gone, has gone all over the world as a result of COVID. We praise God uh, for that opportunity. Uh, our senior pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. Winston Smith, will be on vacation leave commencing tomorrow, November 7, to Monday, December 20. For seven weeks, he will return to office on Tuesday, December 21, 2021. And we do pray that he will have a restful, renewing, uh, quiet time of no engagement so that he can be uh, back with us, powerful, more powerful, and his vigor renewed and refreshed as God continues to use him, uh, as he continues. This is his 45th year at Haven Baptist Church, a faithful, dedicated service, and we're so thankful for that, and thankful for Reverend Smith, and trust that he'll enjoy it. And I know Mrs. Smith will make sure he does. All right? <laughs> um, join us afterwards for a special business meeting after the service this morning. Uh, for a formal vote from membership required to receive uh, new members. Uh, reading through the Bible, this morning's reading, this is just one, three chapters a day. You can get through the Bible in a year. And so the reading today is Luke 22 to 24. And by next Sunday, we should be in John chapter 19, 20, and 21. After all, reading the Bible 100 times is better than reading it. 99 times and throughout the week again because of covid we have these great opportunities we have the ladies and men's fellowship on tuesday night we have bible study uh, midweek bible study on wednesday night and we have youth fellowship on a friday night uh, for the ladies that uh, they have a special time here every week they have a special time uh, they invite all the ladies in their meeting healthy and active aging and this will be presented by uh Sister Duladel Willie Tyndale, PhD, and she'll be presenting on that. This is her area of expertise as well. And uh, I'm sure the ladies are looking forward to that. Men's are at the same time, 7.30 to 9.30, and youth fellowship at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Except this Friday, we are going to be joining uh, Portmore Gospel Assembly for their youth month. And the link is, will be shared as soon as we, that is available to us. Um, so you can look out on the platforms for that. So this Friday, we will be joining the Portmore Gospel Assembly for their youth night kickoff, youth month kickoff on the Friday night. And we're looking forward to that as a couple of our young people will be a uh, major participant in, in that uh, ministry on Friday night. All right. And as we said, it, today is Uniform Sunday. And afterwards, we want to remind all the young people, as we did last year and the year before, I want to take a picture right there to my right on the lawn, um, right after the service. So please uh, be reminded 
um, of that. And the, the final notice I want to mention here um, is that we have souls that are being saved again. We are under quarantine, but the word of God is not quarantined. So please bear in mind that this year so far we have 10 persons who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. Three over the last uh, couple of weeks. And these are from members who have been ministering during the COVID. So we praise God for that. One of them, um, she's a retired person and she's still seeing how God can use her to witness to her neighbor in his difficult time. So we praise God for that, Sister Janet Hawthorne. All right? And the last thing we'll do here is there are probably, probably persons here celebrating um, birthdays and anniversary. So if you're celebrating a birthday today or during this week, you can stand here. You can also raise your hand or send a message in the chat. Um, we we'll want to sing you happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you, may the good Lord bless you, may the good Lord bless you, may the that the Lord will bless you and allow you to live and experience many more beautiful and fulfilling years for many many years to come celebrating birthdays and finally and maybe those who are celebrating wedding anniversary I will want to sing the same uh, happy anniversary uh, to you happy anniversary to you happy anniversary to Thank you to the praise team. And uh, just as our, our next point in the program here, and also put in uh, a notice, we will have the scripture reading today from Luke 10 by Sister uh, Nina Simone Robinson. And after that, we will have a testimony shared by our sister Tamika Reed. So I uh, invite Nina to come for the scripture reading at this time and again also we one of the ways in which we can participate in the service as she comes is that we can give of our worship all of our worship as was said as also we are able to give of our tithes and our offering so even if you're at home you can still participate in this online uh, so we will have the information shared even if you're overseas to be able to share and to give as the Lord has prospered you. And so at this time, uh, we invite our sister Nina uh, Simone Robinson to come for the worship, for the scripture reading. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Luke 10, verses 1 to 16. After 
after this, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who, heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near you. But when you enter a, but when you enter a town and are not welcomed, Go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe with our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near you. If you tell, I tell you, it will be more bearable on you that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. For the, if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sodom, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But, if, but it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will be lifted to the heavens. No, you will go down to Hades. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. This is the reading of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to thank the Lord for the opportunity that he has blessed me with to speak this morning. Um, eight years ago, I thought it would have been different. I didn't know that I would have been here, but God has been faithful and he has proven his faithfulness time and time again. Um, I'm Tamika Reese and in 2013, just after my second son was born. Um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, actually November 19, 2013. And I was diagnosed with a stage two um, triple negative breast cancer. And it had already spread to my lymph nodes and there were seen traces of it in my bloodstream. And at the time I got the news, I think darkness, it was just all darkness around. And for those who have experienced what cancer is like, that's just the word that you know the word, but when you hear it for yourself, um, I cannot explain what goes through your mind and your heart. But the only thing I had to cling to at the time was the God who I knew and who I served. And very early, the Lord placed a psalm in my heart. It was Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not his benefits, bless his name. And in that psalm, it says, it's God who heals all your diseases. And I cling to that truth, knowing that whatever happened, it was God who was going to really take me through this situation. And because of that, I asked the Lord to just direct my path. Whatever it is that he wanted me to do, and whatever road I should take, I asked the Lord to just guide it. And I went into all the decisions, believing that whatever it is, that God was in the midst. And I knew that God could do it himself, but I knew that he would, could also use doctors and others to assist. And I was blessed in the sense that I, I had a job, that I had insurance, and you know I could be treated. Uh, my family, shipped in my church family, prayed hard for me. Uh, my husband, you know, supported me. He made sure everything was in place to really get the treatment that I needed. But in spite of all of that, I knew that 
it wasn't based on whether you had the financial resources or, you know, that would help me to get through because cancer really is not partial. It doesn't recognize rich or poor, young or old, um, Christian or non-Christian. It's something that invades any person's life. And so I knew that it's only God who was going to take me through. And I know when we get the diagnosis, if I, you know, there are people here in our church who have subsequently been diagnosed with cancer. That sense of darkness that surrounds you, only God can really take you out of it. And by placing that psalm in my heart, I, I really cling to the Lord and to his truth, and I buried myself in his word constantly. But lo the Lord allowed me to know upfront that my deliverance was fully dependent on him and not on my resources or anything else. And I thank the Lord for that, that I can be here today to say that God has come through. But there are some other things that I learned. I mean, I could tell you the whole story of what it is, but I believe that that experience was more than just a story. There are so many things that I learned from it. And one of the things that came up for me was about trusting God. And it's quite easy for us to trust God in our heads and we trust God when we read the Bible and we say yes, we trust God and we read scripture and we said yes. But the true test of when you, you know, whether or not you trust God is when things are happening in your life and you have to completely depend on him. And I went through a phase where I knew in my head that I could trust God and I knew the scriptures and I believed. But the question is, did I trust them enough for my situation at this point. So I had no doubt that God could heal. I had no doubt that God could deliver. But did I trust him enough to believe that he was going to do it for me? And the truth is, as much as you want to think that you trust him fully, there is just that niggling doubt in your mind whether or not you're going to get through this thing. And, you know, when I read James, it said you should ask without wavering. And I really struggled for a long time. And I think the fear that was in me, the fear that my children are young and my family is young and if I should die, I would leave my husband with my young children and how would he manage what if something happened to him? And all of those things is on one side of your brain and the other side of your brain is telling that you need to trust God. And I had to really cry out to God and ask him, I said, Lord, I need you to teach me how to trust you because I really believe before this that I did, but I'm having doubts. I remember one day I went for a walk and I was really struggling and I said, Lord, you have to show me something from your word that will allow me to cling to the truth that I know that I can trust you. And the first thing that came to my mind, I have to just trust God because I know who God is. It's not because of anything else, but because of who God is, we can trust him. But the Lord heard me and I think he realized how desperate I was and he gave me, and the truth is I'm not Theologically, I don't know if it makes sense. But when you read the letters, um, the epistles from Paul, Ephesians, Colossians, and all of them, in Ephesians especially, when he talk about you wrestling not against flesh and blood, at the end of those passages, he talks about praying. But when he speaks about praying, he says, afterwards in the immediate um, verse is that you are to watch. And the Lord laid that on my heart that as I prayed, I'm not just to pray, but I'm to watch to see what he's going to do with expectancy. And that is how I prove my trust to him. And I really um, cling on to that truth. And it allowed me to, no matter what I was going through, and no matter what test I had to do, that I, as I pray, I need to look to God and trust him in that regard. The second thing he taught me, um, was about how special I was to him. You know, when you read the Bible, I think the greatest thing God has ever done was when his son died for us. But there's a part of us sometimes I don't think we really connect and realize how precious that truth is. And sometimes we even take it for granted. But what this situation taught me was that when God died for me, for the world, 
apart from the rest of the world, he knew Tamika. He knew me before I was born, before I was formed in my mother's womb, the Bible said he knew me. Um, he said he created me in his own likeness and image. Beyond anybody else in this world, God knew me best. He knew every single strand of hair on my head, he could count them. And it reminded me that Tamika, whatever is going on in your body, God knows, he knew long before. God knows you more than any doctor or anybody else could. You're not just a number, but you're special to God. You're his child. He knows you by name. And today, today I want to encourage anybody, you know, if you're a supporter of someone going through cancer or if you're going through cancer yourself, just to remind yourself that you're not just a number, that God knows you spe specifically and that when you call out to him, he knows that it's Tamika that is calling out to him and to hold on to that truth. I'm out of time, but the final thing I'd like to share is that cancer is a very dark moment. And as you go through it, you go through some very dark times. So things in your head, you're writing your own, um, what do you call the thing that you give at funeral? Eulogy. You write your eulogy over and over, and you wonder what people are going to say. You try to picture what life is going to be after you're gone. Serious darkness you go through, and it's a real struggle. And sometimes you see people going through those illnesses and you really don't know what's going on in their brains. But it's kind of weird that at that time when God reminded me of something in my childhood, which is just very weird why God would have brought that. But when I was growing up, I grew up in the country. And at that time, electricity, only few people had electricity. There were street lights at strategic places and if anybody really grew up in the country back then you know that street light was like you have a light in the, the center part and then you walk and you have another street light but in between that when night come it was pitch black and i don't know if you know what pitch black blackness where you feel like you can hold on to it the blackness where the person is standing beside you and you have no idea except you can sense that someone is beside you you're not seeing anything during those days, there were two things that people used to do, and bathrooms were outside. We had what we call a tinny lamp, and I don't know if anybody knows tinny lamp. It makes us something like a condensed in can, and it had a little the, the thing that come at the top, where you light it, and you would fill it with kerosene. But the thing about a tinny lamp, it gave you light, but it gave you light in a little circle around you, not very far ahead. And so, but you could use it and you, you know your next step, but it's not giving you light way ahead of you. And then some people would use what we used to call it, bottle torch, which is like you put the kerosene in a, a drinks bottle and you stuff it with newspaper at the top and you shake it up and when you light it, you get a big light and you can see way ahead. And for some reason, God reminded me of that. And it reminded me that in your darkness, but you may have a little light ahead, or the light may be way ahead, but it doesn't matter, because God or light is with you all the way. So whether you're having a tiny light moment, or you're having a big torch moment, God is there. And even if it is pitch black, I used to go to the shop on Saturday nights with my grandmother, and we'd be walking side and side, and I'm dying to reach the next street light, because she's walking beside me and I know she's beside me and I can hear her footsteps, but I can't see her. And every now and then she would just say, girl, I guess she just checks that I'm there. Even if it's dark, even if it's dark and it does get dark, every now and then God will remind you that he's there in some special way. And he will say, girl, Tamika, and he'll remind you that I'm right there. And if it's a tinny lamp and you just can't see right ahead, you step forward because as you go, the street light is coming up. And if it's a butter torch and the butter torch burn out very fast, but it give you really good light quickly, God is still there. There's a street light ahead. And I want to encourage you this morning that as you go through the difficulties facing breast cancer or any other kind of cancer, that you hang on to those tinny light moments or your butter torch moment because God is the light and he's going to take you through one step at a time and the light is coming up.
And every now and then, he may have to touch you and say, Tamika, just to remind you that he's there. I pray the good Lord will just guard the hearts of those who are going through any form of cancer. Because at that time, more than anything else, we need God to guard our hearts to tell us that no matter what, we trust him and we believe in him to the very end. Our journeys end differently. I'm here today, but I do know many other people who I was doing treatment with, who I would go to treatment one week and they're just not there. There are many people in our midst who have not made it. But it doesn't matter what your journey looks like. You ask God to guard your heart, that you believe in him and trust him right to the very end, no matter the outcome that you'll hang on, hang on to that truth and that faith that he's God and that he's in control and that ultimately he's the one who heals all our diseases no matter what. May God bless you. Thank you very much to our sister Tamika for sharing that with us and encouraging us. And God is there. Whatever the light, or little light, or no light, God is still there. We just want to pray for her, and we can stand in solidarity for that as well. We have members who have been afflicted dealing with these things. Uh, we have members who have been afflicted and have passed on, and the family members are left behind. And we have members who have family uh, that are dealing with these things, and we also have visitors dealing with it. So we just want to commit. Uh, them to you even as we close off this month even though the month has ended they still have to deal with the challenges so we just want to commit them uh, to the Lord father thank you so much for your grace and your mercy and thank you for being there with a lot of light little light or no light at all thank you for the way in which you can remind your people and remind folks going through difficulty that you are there and that you can be trusted. We pray, Lord, for your special covering over our sister Tamika, our sister Millicent, who shared last week, and all our members who have been dealing with breast cancer and have beaten it, but still many ways, in many ways, uh, still wrestle with the lingering thought. We entrust them to you in the name of Jesus. We entrust the family members who have lost loved ones to breast cancer and other forms of cancer, Lord, and our visitors who come out who are going through the same themselves or they have family members uh, going through this. We commit all of them to you in the name of Jesus. We pray that even when they walk through the valley, that you will prepare a table before them in this difficulty, that you will anoint their heads with oil that their cup will overflow. Let your goodness and your mercy continue to pursue and to chase after them. Remind them of your love and your plan that you have for them and that you're working out your purposes. Remind them of all the good things that you still have in store for them, for them to fulfill, for the difference that you want them to make, for the impact that you want them to have for many days and years to come. We pray that you'll help them to just bask in your love and to know that you have given your best in Jesus Christ. And if you are freely given Jesus Christ, you will give them everything else. Strengthen them and keep them. Give them your peace which surpasses all understanding to guard their hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. And even for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, family members, we pray that this will be the time as they see your grace and mercy on display, they will draw even closer to you, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord, for the fact that we can come to you and to celebrate uh, life and to celebrate your hand at work even in the darkest moment and pray that you'll continue to reveal yourself and to come alongside uh, your people and your people's family as they go through this season in their lives. So we give you thanks and we give you praise in the mighty and powerful and strong name of Jesus, who heals all our diseases and cure of all of our sicknesses, in Jesus' name. Amen. And just before our brother comes back and will we'll take the offering, you can prepare for that. Um, the information will be shared and then to lead us in the second set of worship.
Mine is a privilege here before that to uh, announce or to introduce our speaker today, uh, no stranger to us, Reverend Ronald Webster, born again believer since 19 May 1976. Wow, that's a long time serving the Lord. He's a current pastor of Hopewell, Lighthouse, and the newly emerging Covenant Missionary Churches in Hanover. Husband of Marcia Witter for over 26 and a half years. And he has three beautiful daughters, Renee, who is here today, uh, Misha Marie, and Anna Maria, uh, newly appointed National Director of Evangelism and Missions of the Missionary Church Association in Jamaica, uh, founder of Ron Mars International Ministries, and also founder and principal instructor of Ron Mars School of Missions, offering training to lay leaders in the church in ministry and counseling. Wow. A trailblazer. We have a community development practitioner, having previously served as parish manager for the Social Development Commission. Passionate about prayer and its impact. Passionate about missions and evangelism, as you see in the different uh, areas he's been involved in. Uh, he has mobilized and led missions team, missions team, teams to the Eastern Caribbean islands of Grenada, Saint Vincent. St. Lucia since 2005 and has preached in other islands such as Antigua, Barbuda, and Barbados. He's a lover of the Word of God, passionate, has a servant's heart, and he loves the Lord. And we know that he will be a blessing, not just today as he has been, um, in all the years he's come here and shared. And we are just delighted to have him share with us today. And I know we'll give him our hearty welcome when he comes up. But we just want to say thank you so much, uh, Pastor Webster, for accepting the invitation to come today. And we're looking forward to what God has laid on your heart to share with us today, and telling us how we can get out of our comfort zone. At this time, we invite our brother to come as we have the time for the offering, which we'll pray for at this time. Father, we thank you for your gifts, your many gifts. Thank you for uh, blessing us, making us stewards of what you have blessed us with. And we pray that in recognition of your blessing, that you being the owner of everything has given us the stewardship responsibility to give back abundantly and cheerfully um, out of what you have blessed us with. We pray for those, even have, for those who have nothing to give, that you'll bless them in such a way uh, good measure pressed down and shaken up and running over so that they will be able to give and to share with others. Bless the offerings collected today uh, here physically and those will be collected online. Bless it and use it for the furtherance of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen.
just before our guest <laughs> preacher comes to the stage, we're going to sing this one. I'm trading my sorrows, trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And of course, we want you to join in with us as we sing this one. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. You may stand. Stand with us as we worship. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Here we go. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. And I'm laying it down.
Thank you. You may be seated. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Good morning. It is uh, good to be here with you at Haven Hill Baptist Church. I want to use the opportunity, first of all, to greet Reverend Dr. Winston Smith and uh, Mrs. Smith and uh, Pastor Jason Anderson and Mrs. Anderson and their families on behalf of my wife, Marcia, my girls, Mish Marie, Renee, and Anna Maria, along with the family, church family in Hanover, uh, Hopewell Lighthouse, and uh, our newly established Covenant Missionary Church in uh, Lucy. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for having invited me to share with you in this, your Youth Sunday. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the worship, and uh, I really want to say how much I believe that God uh, is evident. His Spirit is evident amongst us. The scripture has already been read for us. And I so I will not read it again. However, if you have your Bibles, it would be good to be right there. Because I will refer to the various verses so that we can better understand the text in light of the theme Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 1 through 16. I want to talk to us this morning on what I call the Go concept. The Go concept. The overall theme of your Youth Sunday is get out of your comfort zone. And it had me thinking, had me reflecting, had me praying about what is it that God wanted to remind us of today. And as I did the thinking and the reflecting and the praying, I was directed to our text before us this morning. A text that records Jesus sending 70 of his disciples into the cities and villages that he was about to later pass through. A text like this has many lessons, has within it many applications that we could actually draw from it. One person even said that the instructions found in Luke 10 were later modified and in some respects reversed. But be that as it may, I believe that the text has much to teach us. I therefore want to use this text as uh, the lesson, as the point of departure for considering the Go concept. And I don't want you to forget that. The Go concept. I call it the Go concept because when one thinks about getting out of one's comfort zone, it is clear that it requires some form of movement. It requires some adjustment. In the Christian context, this involves a go in. I want to therefore highlight four things that I believe this go concept involves as seen from the text of Luke 10, 1 through 16. Let me just quickly tell you what they are. They are, number one, the fact that the Go concept is driven by commandment. Number two, the Go concept involves community. Number three, the Go concept requires communication. And number four, the Go concept demands commitment. Firstly, the Go concept driven by commandment. We see Jesus having taught his disciples about the high cost of being a disciple, 
now giving them specific instructions as he sends them out in pairs. Verse number three of Luke 10 gives the clear, concise commandment of Jesus. He said to them, go your way. Go your way. The mission that is that, that, that we have is a mission that is initiated by a commandment of the Lord himself. It is a commandment to go, to go. Truth be told is that this is radically opposed to what the normal modus operandi is. We invite people to come. We invite people to come to church. We invite people to come to a meeting. There is a lot of inviting to come, but Jesus' concept is that we must go. So the concept of go is one that involves a commandment, an instruction that is given by Jesus to all his disciples. To all his disciples. When we invite people to come, we're inviting people to come into our space. We're inviting people to follow the rules of our space. We're inviting people to follow the way that we do things. Jesus seems to turn things around as he sends his disciples into the community. He commands them to go. And you read the instructions of Jesus, not only in Luke 10, but if you read after his resurrection, Matthew 28, which we all know, Jesus says what? Go and make disciples. Read the account of Mark. Mark in Mark 16 has Jesus saying, go into all the world. If we are going to impact the world around us, it involves getting out of our comfort zones. Getting out of where we are comfortable. Where we have, can I say it in Jamaican turn, where we have everything nice and easy. It's a commandment of Jesus that we are to go. And by the way, this commandment is not an optional commandment. It is an obligation. Every child of God is expected to obey the commandments of our Lord. You remember Jesus saying to his disciples in John 15, he says, if you love me, what will you do? You will keep my commandments. You will keep my commandments. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. So we must understand that we are all called to go. It is a commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it requires obedience. But the second thing about the go concept that is important is that the go concept involves not only obedience to the commandment of Jesus, but the go concept involves community. Community. You say, Pastor, where do you see that? In the text before us. Well, notice Jesus says to, to the people, he, to the, his disciples. He says, I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. And in verse number five, whatever house you enter. So he sends them out into the cities, into the villages ahead of him. He sends them among people and he sends them into their homes. All of that is part and parcel of community. Wikimedia defines community as a social unit with commonality such as norms, religion, values, customs, or identity. Jesus, therefore, commands his disciples to go into the cities and to every place that he was to come. And he instructs them to enter into their houses. All of that is rooted in community. The disciples' mission was to engage the community. Clearly, the community 
would have different norms. The community that they were to engage would have different values. The value system of the world in which we live is much different from the value system of the believer. The believer is driven by the word of God. The world is driven by their own selfish ambitions and desires. Different value system. It is easy to remain among people that we are comfortable with. It is absolutely difficult to change your position, your status, and to go and minister to others. But did you know that is exactly what Jesus calls us to do? It is exactly what he commands us to do. When you look at the disciples clearly, they would have to step out of their comfort zones, eh? their safe homes. They would have to step out of their comfortable vehicles. They would have to step out of their common and well-polished language. They would have to go into a space that might disturb their philosophy of life and living. But that's exactly what Jesus commanded them to do. Engage community. Now, engaging community off means adjusting their language. Trying to understand those that we're ministering to. Trying to understand their lifestyle. Notice I did not say accept their lifestyle. I said understand their lifestyle. Going into community means that we're going to have to be non-judgmental. We're going to have to be like Jesus when the woman caught in the very act of adultery was brought to him by the Pharisees. You will recall that Jesus stooped down and began to write. And when he said, he that is without sin, cast the first stone. He was not accepting her lifestyle. But he was also not condemning her. Later on, we see the interaction between her and Jesus. We later also see in John 4, Jesus' interaction with the woman at the well, a Samaritan woman. And we could go on and on. We see him, John 9, interacting with the blind man, the man born blind. And in the Jewish philosophy, if you were born blind or born with a physical uh, defect, it would have meant that you had sinned or your parents had sinned. Jesus interacted with all of these individuals in various places. He dealt with community. So he sends his disciples on commandment, on instruction to go and engage community. Community. Can I tell you a, a, a quick story? Years ago, I was invited by a particular church to speak about, uh, address a meeting about uh, social action of church. And as we spoke, in front of the church is a playing field. You know what happens in Jamaica, where football fields are not only invaded, but they are packed by men. If you want to find the men, they are either in prison or on the football field. And as we talked and talked, the Lord showed me the football field and said, highlight it. And I said to the church, here is a group of 50, 60 men every day. They use your church steps to change their outfit. Here is a, a group of men who you can readily and easily engage why they are right under your nose i will never forget the pastor was sitting at the back he got up and he said to me pastor webster i'm going to tell you straight i will not go down and engage these men i will not engage men who smoke ganja and so on and so forth well needless to say that that church has remained small, struggling to find men. 
but they are right there. And Jesus commands us to engage community. One of the things that I know, Pastor Anderson will tell you, Dr. Smith will tell you, is that when you engage community and they come to know you as a servant of the Lord, as soon as they see you come, they start trying to hide the ganja. I remember one time being in a particular community in Westmoreland. We were out visiting and I looked up the road and a young man was on his way down towards us. And as he spotted me, he started to hide the ganja that he was smoking. When I got up to him, I said, boss man, you're not afraid the ganja burn out your pocket. And he said, pastor, you see me? I said, yes. And I began a conversation with him about the ganja. What is that you're smoking? And he says, pastor, it is medicine. Medicine, pastor. I said, how often do you take this medicine? He said, pastor, every day. Every day. And I said, you're telling me that every day you take this medicine and you're still not getting better because you're taking the medicine still. I said, if you went to the doctor and he gave you the medicine and he gave you a particular medicine, every day you took the medicine and year upon year you're still not getting better. Would you not change the medicine and the doctor? You see, we're going to have to understand that we have to engage community. We have to engage community. We, 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 we have an opportunity to be non-judgmental, to get out of our comfort zones on the instruction of our Lord. I want to say to young people, your school is a community. Engage your school. That's your community. I want to say to those of you in the workplace, your workplace is a community. Engage your community, your workplace. I want to say to those of you who live in gated communities, in apartment complexes. It's a community, and you are called upon to get out of your comfort zone. There are so many people who live in gated communities who do not know their neighbors. You hear the doors open and close, but you have never seen them. Gone are the days when people would come into communities, and neighbors would ensure, but good old days I call it, Neighbors would ensure that they go over with a welcome gift and they would introduce themselves. Eh? And I'm not very old and I'm just a little over 50. But, but those are the good old days. And people would engage community. They would introduce themselves. I'm a Christian. Nowadays, if you ask your neighbor, I, I have a thing that I do with my church members. I know they don't like it, but I do it. I go into their workplace to visit them. And I will say to their co-workers are you aware that so-and-so is a christian and i watch the reaction because if you are in your workplace and nobody knows that you are a christian then it means can i say in jamaican terms sitting around something is radically wrong and so jesus says to his disciples i am sending you ahead of me into community Engage your community, and it is a commandment. But there's a third thing about the Go concept that we need to highlight. It is what we find in the second half of verse number five. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. The Go concept is not only driven by commandment and involves community, but it requires communication. It requires communication. No, I hear a lot of people talk about the fact that I can be a Christian, live my life, and say nothing. I understand lifestyle evangelism, but lifestyle evangelism is ineffective if there is no personal evangelism. If there is no communication, we are called upon to, be, to engage in conversation with communities. To begin our communication with the foundation, and that foundation speaks to our mandate and purpose, which is about the peace of God. Are you aware that fundamental 
to the Christian faith is the peace of God. Peace of God. Luke is big on the matter of peace. Check chapter 2 and verse 14. He highlighted the heavenly angelic greeting. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Watch Luke's unfolding of story after story of individuals who have been disturbed by one thing or the other who comes in contact with Jesus Christ and finds peace. The woman who had the issue of blood for 12 long years tried everything and instead of getting better, she got worse. When she came in contact with Jesus, she had peace. She had peace. Everything was second. So Luke is very big on the matter of peace. So he highlights Jesus sending the disciples into their community and to communicate with the people out there by first of all saying, Peace. Be to this house. We are called upon in a world that is in turmoil. A world that there is so much going on to disturb our peace. Mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. The world is in need of peace. And the prince of peace is Jesus. And he sends his disciples as he's sending us into the community. Make a difference. Make a difference. Can I share something else with you? Years ago, I was in St. Lucia at a, an ISAF camp to which I was invited to speak. And while there met a young lady who felt the call of God upon her life to go on the mission field. She wanted to go to Grenada, to youth with a mission, to be trained. But she had the need for financial resources. I remember promising her that I would use my influence, if I had any, to raise some support for her, not in Jamaica, but to raise some support for her in St. Vincent, where I had a number of people that I knew. They all use Eastern Caribbean dollar. Jamaican dollar don't value anything there. So if you're going to help them, you're going to have to use EC dollar or the US dollar. And, and so I engaged a few persons. One young lady in particular in St. Vincent was an economist working in the Ministry of Finance in St. Vincent out of the office of the Prime Minister. And she decided that every single month she was going to give so that this young lady could go from St. Lucia to Grenada to be trained for the mission field. As she got involved and as she got the words, the news about what was happening, it so happened that God placed upon her life a call to missions. She gave up her job as an economist. And she herself went to Grenada to Youth with a Mission. Trained. Today, she's serving all the way over in Asia, in Cambodia. Having left all that she had, she was comfortable as a young lady, doing well, pursuing degrees and influencing policy in her island, on her island, but God called her. Every month I get a report from her out of Cambodia about what God is doing there, how God is using her. She has had to learn their language. She has had to eat the food they eat. She has had to ride on a bike, which she never did in St. Vincent. She had to leave her comfort zone. But one thing that is very clear from her constant and regular updates, is that there is a peace that she has been in the will of God. Being in the will of God. She has learned how to communicate with the community in Cambodia. 
learn their language. Eh? Able to communicate the gospel. And what a joy it has been when she writes back to talk about the souls that are being saved. Are you aware that we Jamaicans, we have so much going for us? So much. We are so comfortable in our churches, in our, in our facilities, so comfortable in our way of living. But are you aware that there are billions of persons out there in the wider world who are in need of someone who will come and communicate the peace of God to them? There is a peace that the community needs. And that peace comes from Jesus Christ. It is a peace that passes human understanding. So as you follow the commandments of Jesus Christ, as you engage community, he also tells us what to say. He tells us what to communicate. So we don't tell the people what we want. We tell the people what he tells us to tell them. He gives us everything we need to engage community. In this engagement and communication, are you aware that when you leave your comfort zone to share with others, you are communicating not only the peace of God, but you're communicating the love of Christ? You're communicating the love of Christ. My dad, most of you know, was a pastor in the Independent Baptist Church. I learned a lot from him. And one of the things that stood out in one of the lessons he taught me is I will never forget the day he came home and he told us how he went to visit an elderly lady in a very rural community. I won't tell you the community because you'll know it. Very rural community. And uh, this was uh, a home that he would not have even slept a night. Was not a nice place, never smelled good, um, never looked good. But this elderly lady was a member of the church. Pastor comes to visit her. She offers pastor what she has. And my father said, I never wanted it. I never wanted to eat what she offered me. But I had to accept it in order to communicate to her the love of Christ. He took what she offered. He ate it. Member felt good. He said when he got down the road, you know what happened? He released it. Let it out. Brought it back up. She has the impression that pastor has accepted me. I hear a lot of my members saying, boy, pastor, you go to some member's house and you know, go to some other members. Probably we need to stop going to everybody else. But, but, but there's a way that you communicate to persons when you, you leave your, 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 your status quo, leave your community, leave your comfort zone, and you reach out to them where they are, you communicate the love of Christ. You often hear people say, when it's crusade time, that is when you're ready to come to invite me to church. But you pass me every day, your windows up, and not even tooting of the horn. Eh? I know some of us are a little bit afraid of being called beep beep like the politician in St. Mary a couple of years ago was called beep beep because the, the community felt that every time he drove past he blew his horn. Um, but, but, but it's a good thing to do. You are engaging community and you are communicating. So when time comes for you to have a one on one with them they will not be opposed to you. We are having some challenges because we are comfortable with how things are. Jesus says, when you get into their homes, say peace to this house. If a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon it. If they reject the peace, then shake the dust off your feet and leave. So fourthly, we have seen this go concept. It involves, uh, it is driven by a commandment of Jesus. 
go. Go. Secondly, it involves community. Engage the community. Thirdly, it, 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 is, it, it requires communication. And finally, the go concept demands commitment. It demands commitment. It demands commitment because it is breaching cultural norms and it is strangling your comfort zone. You're squeezing your comfort zone in order to reach people. Go into your community. Go into the community. Engage in conversation, Jesus says, and stay there. Notice what he says. If you get into a house, verse number 7, and the house accepts your peace, remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give for the labor is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Now, this is really going against your comfort zone. You go down to Grenada and they serve you Kalalu. And you're excited about Kalalu in, in Grenada. But then you learn and discover as Rene and the others discovered, that Kalalu in Grenada is not Kalalu in Jamaica. Kalalu in Grenada is young dashing leaf. And when it comes out, it comes out very green and softy, softy, you know, putty, putty. But one of the things you learn is that when you get out there to minister to these people and they place it before you, at least try it. At least try it. And you have to stay the course. You can't run in and run out. So let's broaden this. You're having a conversation as a young person with a member of your class concerning the things of God, concerning the gospel of Christ. And today they refuse it. Jesus says, continue to engage them. Be committed. Because somebody else in the class might accept it one might reject it but somebody else will in your workplace one might reject it there, there's a and let me close there is a a movie i watched many many years ago those of you who come from the old youth for christ days there was a movie called night song i have never forgotten the movie i don't remember lots of movies but that one i remember the night song and the night song was uh, um i will serve thee because i love thee but in the song in the in the movie there was a young man who was a Christian on a basketball team in his high school. And he was afraid to tell anybody that he was a Christian. There was another young man who was also a Christian, never told anybody. But he was busy going from team member to team member to share the gospel. There came a time when the drug dealers um, attacked the home of the young man who had shared the gospel with his sister. She gave her life to the Lord. As a result of which she stopped taking drugs. And so the drug dealers were losing money. And they decided to kill members of his family. It so happened that as he shared with his team. He discovered that all the members of the team had given their lives to the Lord. Every one of them was afraid of coming out to be the first one to say, I did. But one Christian young person among them went from friend to friend sharing the gospel and the entire team gave their lives to the Lord. Commitment. When one person turns away, continue to share the gospel with others. Continue to share. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't say, because I don't like how this is going, then I'm going to throw in the towel. For in truth, and in fact, this is really not about you nor me. This is about God. And that's what Jesus says as he closed the passage there in Luke. He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. 
And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. In other words, you know, Jesus was saying, it is not about you, my disciples. You get out there into the community. You engage them in conversation. You remain committed to obeying my commandment in taking the message of peace. It is not about you. It is about me. The rejection of the word is the rejection of me. Can I say to us as I close that there is an ease in Zion. The children of God, members of the kingdom of God, have become too comfortable in our surroundings. So we go to church and we get to the buildings and we're very comfortable. We sit in our homes and we are even more comfortable thanks to COVID. Recently, I was sharing in, in a Bible study on Zoom in a church. And we were talking about uh, stewardship of giving. And uh, we were talking about stewarding our time. And I was making the point that uh, we sit in our homes uh, watching YouTube or Zoom. And uh, we are doing so many other things while we are doing it. So, some people this morning, they are in church but not in church. They are at home doing many other things while the service is being played. And I made mention of that. And I'm saying, if you are giving God your time, if you're committing yourself to God, then you should give time. So church time means that I am blocking out a period of time for church. A lady sent me a message after the Bible study. To say, Pastor, you hit me and hit me hard. I said, how? She said, I was there watching the Bible study and ironing. And that one hit me. I had to put the iron down. You see, we have to learn that if we are committed to God, we must commit our time. We must give him attention. We must give him our undivided attention. If we are going to be committed to the Lord. Would you like Isaiah say this morning is response to the question of God who will go for us will you be willing to say here am I Lord send me out of my comfort zone into a dying world as lambs before wolves but knowing that the Lord is with me the go concept driven by commandment involves community requires uh, communication and demands commitment i wonder this morning if there is anyone in the sanctuary who will make a fresh commitment to the lord to engage community to get out of your comfort zone and to take this message of peace i'm going to invite you to leave your comfortable seat and to come down to the altar as a public commitment to God that Lord I want to be obedient to your commandment to go anybody like that as we prepare to pray anybody like that invite the praise team to come Say, so Lord, I am willing to go. I'm willing to share the gospel. Those boys on the street corner, those women out there, those persons in my workplace, those people, students, colleagues of mine in my school. Is there somebody this morning? Say, I am willing to be God's mouthpiece. Recently, as you come and as we pray, we started a year group in my high school. Having entered high school some 40 years ago. And my classmates said, Webster, we knew you would be a pastor. I said, really? They said, yes. From high school, you were always talking about Jesus. I guess they saw it. I never did. But one thing I do know is that I have had no regrets 
giving up everything else to focus to focus on fulfilling God's commandment is there somebody else this morning who will join this gentleman here to say I might have been committed in the past but I'm not as committed now but I'm renewing my commitment this morning is there a young person who will say I am committing myself to being in my school as we sing will you come let's pray with you this morning but God will strengthen you This is your commitment to God this morning. I am willing to go. Anybody else? this morning I'm withholding nothing from you Lord I'm giving everything to you for I want to be obedient of you who are in your homes, right where you are in your home, why not make that commitment to God this morning, that I'm ready and I'm willing to go, I'm willing to be obedient to your commandment, I'm willing to engage my community, I'm willing to be involved in communicating your word, your gospel, and I'm making a commitment this morning, withholding nothing. We are preparing to pray as we commit these who are here at the altar, those in their homes who are making this commitment. Others of you who are making the commitment in your heart, we are preparing to pray for you that God will strengthen you. We are grateful and we are thankful for your word, the pure word of God. We are thankful that despite our inadequacies, despite our shortcomings, that you have considered us worthy through your son Jesus Christ to be an active participant in this mission that you have considered us through your son Jesus Christ worthy to be called and commanded by you to impact community we ask oh God for your grace we ask for your mercy we pray for these who are standing before you this morning, publicly declaring their commitment to go in, to being obedient to your voice and your instructions to go and make disciples, impact their community, 
with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, that you will cover them under your blood, that you will fill them with your spirit, that you will set them apart and give them your words so that they might speak your words, communicate your words and your words only. I pray that you will remove every encumbrance from their lives, every doubt, every everything that is not ordained by you. And I pray right now as they surrender their lives to you, their wills, and their all to you, that God, you'll receive them and you'll use them mightily to expand your kingdom here on earth. We thank you again for today. We thank you for those in their homes who are making this commitment. We thank you for those who will make the commitment in the days ahead as they view the broadcast. We ask, O oh God, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May we recognize that you have chosen us and ordained that we shall go and bear fruit. So God, send us out into the field. Send us as laborers into the field because the harvest is ripe and ready for reaping. Help us to wake up and to recognize that men and women are dying in sin. And oh, how they need a messenger with a message of salvation. Thanks again for the opportunity to gather in your presence. We give you the glory. We give you the honor today as you use us and use us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 thank Pastor Webster for that timely word and we have a presentation that we're going to be making to him at this point in time. ministry we want to thank you so much for coming and to remind us that we weren't meant to be comfortable that in order for us to be able to get out of our comfort zone we have to remember that God has commanded us to go to engage our community to be in conversation with those that need us and to just stay committed regardless of whatever is happening around us so we want to give you this little token of appreciation and we pray that God continues to bless you and bless your ministry as you continue to touch lives. Thank you everybody for coming out to service today. We're going to be closing with one final song. We're going to do a reprise of the song, Here is My Worship. And we're going to be doing that song at this time.
Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen, church. Uh, thank you so much to our young people and for the time, the dedication, the commitment for us to have the service today. And we just want to remind us as we close, we're going to have our members meeting. Um, it, the information was shared all the members already on Zoom, so you can join in on that. And for those who are here who are members, you can remain uh, for that. So we're going to invite Reverend Smith to come and to do that um, at this time. Uh, we're just reminding us that we have an item to deal with on the agenda uh, for today. Remind about voting in members who were baptized last week and those who are coming in um, from other places. All right, so we're going to do that uh, right now at this time. Thank you so much for everyone who joined us today. For our young people, remember there's a picture. We're going to be taking pictures right there outside, so you can do that um, immediately. And uh, for members, we will remain here for the business at this time. All right? Now God bless you and keep you. And thanks for all those who participated in the service uh, today. Pastor Webster, we appreciate everything uh, you did. And we pray for your safety as you go back to uh, Hanover. I invite our secretary to come because she is very much aware of where we are and what you have to be done. If you could come quickly, church secretary. All the members on YouTube, you can move over to Zoom because we'll not be streaming this aspect of the uh, service. All right, the service is officially over and we're going to move over into Zoom so we can conduct our meeting. All right, so God bless you and come again. Uh, join us again, same time, same place, same link um, at Haven Baptist Church.